is a beautiful day at EGX Digital. And I am a horrible goose. <laughs> or am I? Surely, as a goose, I exist beyond the realm of human morality and cannot be judged on, on the spectrum of human morality. It would be ridiculous because I'm clear, clearly a goose. Um, however, I have got some people here who are going to be judged. They're all the most terrible recidivist people they're gamers they work in the gaming industry let's um let's meet these <laughs> these terrible people <laughs> oh god oh god let's get the slides on honk yeah <laughs> let's meet the victims first up who's who's first here we go boom it's Me. ben who Hi. are you why are you here <laughs> i'm ben nizan i work at mediatonic on a little known game called four guys so most, it is. most well known for, uh, of course, uh, ruining the lives of everyone over the summer. Are you responsible for that f fruit game, the one with the panels? Uh, no, I'm not responsible for that one, but it is one of my faves. So I guess I am in a way. I enabled it. So yeah. We've got the enabler. Yeah. Terrible. Right, I could on, have said no. But... <laughs> look, oh, look. Oh, look. That's look. nice. Fo follow Ben. Do that. All right. Go away, Ben. Okay. Because up next is Kat. Who are you? Why are you here to be judged? I'm Kat. I'm here to be judged. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm a marketing manager at Bot Studios, so I do all of the adverts that you guys see. I am so sorry. Um, and I also am a, the, one of the admins at London Gamers, so um, I... Um, promoting the gay agenda. Um, mostly it's just cats, to be quite honest. Just cats? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on, let's put some... Look, follow. If you if you want to be gay in London, join the gamers. Known for taking the waifs and strays off the streets into a disgusting life of, of gaming. Appalling. All right, we'll come to your judgment shortly, uh, cat. Uh, and up next... Oliver, who are you, Cat Man? Hello, hello, I Cat. Uh, cat ears. That is a big part of my personality. Um, so I'm um, Oliver, uh, best known for uh, the work I did on uh, Sniper Elite VR, some talks and panel things at uh, EGX, and most recently we just released Brightpore at my current studio, Radical Forge. Oh my God! Oh my God! Whoa, what's, what's that logo? Logos, logos! Ah, so many logos. <laughs> Um, so yes, that's me, and what a pleasure to be here. Most well known for uh, telling people that it's okay. The life of a game dev is okay. And something what have I done? Do. <laughs> Unforgivable. Unforgivable. Outrageous <laughs> behaviour. Um, get him follow, folks. Right, now I've got to see if I can add you all in. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Hi, everyone. Flawless. Flawless. Flawless victory. <laughs> Right, so how's it going to work? I should probably tell you. <sighs> That's me, by the way. It turns out I'm not actually I'm not actually a goose. I'm gonna oh my god! That. What? A what? A <laughs> You've ruined <laughs> the illusion now. <laughs> ruined everything's ruined. I've got my own uh, logo I can put up. <gasps> oh my god! Coach All right, I'm easy. To, I'm easy. Find me. Um, confidence coach for geeks and nerds, and do stuff like this. Apparently. So um, it turns out that the majority of gamers, when given the opportunity, will play as a goodie. Why is that? If we're given the opportunity to explore your, your darkest desires and fantasies, why will you still? Why do people still play nice, um, as demonstrated on this uh, pie chart? It doesn't get any better than that. Let me just tell you now. <laughs> It's not going to get any better. Um, so I'm going to subject you to a, a series of moral dilemmas. But who's what? The Paragon. Beware! Evil doers, I will get you. Uh, oh, the Renegade doesn't play by the rules. Where, where would you place yourselves right now if you had to put yourself on the Paragon Renegade spectrum? Um, Oliver. Oh, no. Oh, no. Um, 
my friends describe me as immensely chaotic and i actually strongly disagree with this i have always considered myself a very lawfully evil person however if my friends are to be believed i'm extraordinarily renegade um so here so, i guess i guess that's that's the situation that we find ourselves in so renegade and contrary good cat what about you i think i i'm the opposite i think i i think i'm kind of like quite a little bit out there I'm not always doing good and then my friends turn around and like no you're so nice I'm like I'm not I really am not you just don't know me well enough and then they keep knowing so I think I think I'm in the middle though like I tend I'm I'm very much lawful neutral I stick by my own set of rules but like yeah the misunderstood monster operating in shades of grey excellent and bad what about you? Oh, I think probably renegade for the aesthetics, but I think I'm a pa- boring paragon, really. Maybe oh. a, enough enough into the red to get forced lightning or whatever, and then everything else the other side. Paragon with a nice hat. Lovely. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that, we've got an idea of where you are. Um, so I'll, I'll pose some questions, some classic gaming dilemmas. You'll have a debate, and then I'll judge you. Uh, excellent. That's what I was born to do. Content <laughs> notice. Blood, death, theft, infidelity, interspecies romance. There might be some swearing or cursing. I'm not sure how much we're allowed to get away with. Sorry, EGX and lovely Tom Champion. Hi. And also sometimes maybe you might get some um, slide numbers because apparently I've forgotten to take them all out. Uh, <laughs> spoiler alerts for Bioshock, Mass Effect 2, The Walking Dead, Telltale Game Season 1 and Fallout New Vegas. If you've not played them by now... Um, off tits <laughs> right so let me try and get a baseline level of where you really are you've told me where you think you are let's we'll be the judge of that so bioshock who's played bioshock excellent so uh spooky little girls you can they're clearly a bit evil and a bit spooky. They've got slugs in their heads. You can remove the slug and get all the magic to give you, like, bees from your hands and stuff. Uh, or you can save them and not get the magic. Uh, what did you do? <laughs> it's all about the bees, right? I think I'd harvest for the bees. Harvest, one harvester. Yeah. This is the thing. Bees, bees aren't that good. Like, give me, like... <laughs> Give give me something better than bees and I'll harvest. But like otherwise, it's it's got to be rescue. Like I want I want the power to like instantly like hold my hand out and just have coffee appear in it. That's that's the power I need to have a bigger child soul. Would the coffee spurt from your fingers and would it be hot, or would it just? It would be lukewarm and it would come from like the palm of my hand. So like if I hold my hand like that, I can just go. Mm. Attention to detail is good there. Coffee. I think he would have to kill spooky little girls in order to have coffee palm. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with killing little girls for coffee palm. I'm not fine with killing little girls for bee hands. For bee hands. Um, so, there... so we've got a problem with bees in the world. So I actually think murdering the little girl to save the bees is the correct moral decision. And I get to keep my renegade street cred. For the greater oh. good. Killing children. For the greater good. Spooky little girls cowering um, for the greater good. That's fine. Um, so we're all killing little girls for our own benefit. Great. Um, Mass Effect 2. Um, a reporter's chatting shit about you. Do you punch her in the face? <laughs> Cracks knuckles. <laughs> um, uh, that, that moment is so incredibly iconic. And giving people the joy of such an iconic moment is that not a game a greater good <laughs> um, there's a theme there's a theme emerging in his answers the very good. early on the and, evil and for the bit, greater good you know just, yeah how annoying are they being oh, oh really they they're, really they're, annoying they're, they're spreading shit all over the citadel about you the, yeah. dragging your name through the dirt they're endangering your military efforts Oh, okay. Are they actually doing any good reporting of any useful kind? A little bit, you know. A little bit. Shades of grey here. It is very fashionable to attack journalists at the moment, but I think I'll probably not punch them in the face on balance, even if they are being annoying. Cat. 
I think I'm also in the I'm not going to punch them, but that's mostly because I feel like I could blackmail them at a later stage. <laughs> right, let's like... just look at that where where it's a male shirt punching her. Ooh. I think it's it's not aged well, has it? Oh no, <laughs> it's not aged well. <laughs> like, in all like, this is this is the other thing is that I'm pretty sure I could take her, and I feel like if I was going to attack her, I wouldn't just punch her in the face. I'd like rugby tackle her off of them. I think that <laughs> that's that's how you get that's how you get rid of them. But mm. I also feel like there's much better ways to get back at them. Good. Um Walking Dead. Um everyone like played this? this? Anyone played this? I did. Um, I would you make a little girl shoot you in the head because you've been oh, bitten by a zombie? No. That bit's really sad. Mm. Yeah. So, <laughs> yes. You're going to be a zombie, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. going to be a zombie, and she needs to learn. Yeah. It's tough to eat. Tough and up, but. <laughs> <laughs> It, it did seem it, like the, the end of the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It did seem like the objectively correct thing to do is make her shoot you. Like, it is good target practice for her. It is. So oh, she needs a giant it in unmoving game. target in mm. front. She maybe you should make her wait until you become a zombie and then shoot you, because that's proper practice. Mm. Yeah. Good. I like that. A bit of bit of XP gain as well as yeah. shooty bang time fun good right let's introduce the morality ometer this is how we're going to judge you um the introduction the... mechanics oh my god <sighs> this this would be great if i could be bothered to edit in some actual animation but i can't so we have this um the morality ometer will turn and provide judgment as to whether you're <laughs> renegade or paragon and i think with with, with kind of renegade at the moment we're in here we're, we're over here as a group i think um game developers sorry, are me yeah, it turns sorry, out that for us, everyone. um good <laughs> that's what we kind of expected all right let's go proper let's go deep now oh, decision God. one it's time to fall out in new vegas have you heard legend of vault 34 now cat i know you've played a lot of uh of really, Fallout. Really like perhaps you'd Fallout. like perhaps you'd like to tell us a bit about Vault 34. Huh? Okay. I've been playing a lot of Fallout 76 recently, so I've got to try and remember the old games. This doesn't help that you've just taken my notes off the screen. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm gonna remember. <laughs> okay. Um so this is the one where you've got to choose between the it's the one where it was overstocked and originally it was um yeah it was overstocked um and so they basically decided over whether they wanted to shut down the core which saves the cops but kill the vault dwellers or save the vault dwellers the cops will fail like you basically you've just got to choose how you die um it's just a case of whether you wish to die from starvation or like um this was the one where they had two was this the one where they had two halves of the vault and over over complicating it now cat let's get back to <laughs> so the, the basically the core of the vault is leaking radiation oh no terrible radiation everywhere uh it's leaking it out into the local environment uh into the river oh no you don't want your water irradiated uh, so you could shut down the core, save the crops, stop the water from getting all radioactive. However, everyone in that vault is going to die. Uh-oh, you'll be responsible for those deaths. Or you can save them. Radiation will continue to leak, the crops will fail, and the water supply will get irradiated. So what? You'll have saved a bunch of people. There's, there's more places to get food, right, in the radioactive wasteland. Everything's a bit radioactive. What do you do? You save the vault dwellers. This is this is cut and dry. You go and save the vault dwellers. The cops fail. The water supply leaks, but you can go and get other ones. And it's also a case of at that point, it forces the vault dwellers out of the vault, and then you can be like, right, now you can learn the hard truths of what 
it is like living in the wasteland. I have spent way too long playing nuclear winter. I'm not going to let you, I'm not going to call you anymore. You're going to go out in that vault and you're going to go and explore the wasteland. So we're going to have more people, more mouths to feed yeah. and, and less resources to do mm. that. Ben. No, no, no. Cannibalism. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Would well, you eat the people that you just saved? Well, of... They're a bit radioactive, aren't they? So probably yeah. not. <laughs> <laughs> You're stopping one problem for another, really. But what would you do, though? Would you what shut would down I do? the core? Or, oh, or I would you well, I mean, them? what I'd actually do is get them to fix the core themselves. But I suppose I have to choose. Um, mm. I'd, I'd, I'd shut down the core. I think because you just this core. You're have a oh, all all those, oh, that couple who just got married yesterday. Yeah, and well, they had a nice time. Uh, all those children. Oliver. Demolish that core. <laughs> Demolish the core. <laughs> Get it out. We've got we to gotta think. You've got to save the few this time because you're guaranteed to save them. If you let them wander out into the wasteland, they're all going to walk into a big old death claws mouth. Big chompy lunch for him. No good to any of us. We're going to shut down that core. So, what about the death They need to eat too. They death claws are an endangered species. I, I swear they, they they don't look like they eat much. They're fine. They're gonna be like <laughs> So they're angry. They're the like time. spiders. They're like spiders. They can exist without food for long periods of time. So we've had Is that two true? <laughs> Fallout two Law. The greatest Fallout Law. <laughs> Please don't Google the Fallout Law because I'm almost certainly wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the comments below. Let tell Oliver how wrong he is in the comments below. <laughs> Um, well, I, of course, as a as a goose, as an evil goose, as a horrible goose, I'm just going to have a little roll around. I'm going to let the let the leaks happen and have a lovely roll around, and then go steal all of the food for myself. I wonder if I could eat people. Hmm. Right, morality-ometer time. Where, where? I have no idea anymore. Oh, we're on question one, and I don't. I. I think the greater good there won out. I think I think we've nudged it from over here. I think we're we're a bit middly. We're a bit grey. We're a grey mm-hmm. Jedi at the moment. Um and that means we get to ask the morality ometer for some advice. And you'll join in with me next time, but this time I'll just say morality ometer, swirl, swirl, swirl. Tell us the lesson that we must learn. And that's a very good um lesson. That we should learn. Thank you very much, morality ometer. I don't know if we're going to get away with this. Um, I can't wait. <laughs> you can edit something in. It's fine. Fantastic. Decision two. I just met you. This is crazy. Let's do a question about Cool Cool Mountain, maybe. Please don't say it was Nintendo, because this one's about Super Mario 64. Mm. Have we all played Super Mario 64? I like that one. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, video I'm about to show. Fair use. Love affection. I love you, Nintendo. Thank you very much. Um, it's by YouTuber Butter Bailey. So uh, give them some love <laughs> and some <laughs> likes. Um, so Cool Cool Mountain. The, the mission where you have to rescue the little penguin baby and bring it back to its mama to get the star and once you've done that of course you can pick the little penguin baby up and uh take it to the edge of the cliff and then say bye bye penguin baby away you go did you do this and then to add insult to injury did you still collect the star (laughs) but you just then what did you do would you, would you, like would you drop the baby penguin off the mountain in Mario 64? Have you, you ever done this? Anything? Sorry? Do you gain anything for chucking the baby penguin off? I mean, I, I think it is very comedic. <laughs> <laughs> you just have a lovely time, really. And, and you're testing, you're testing the emergent narrative that emerged within Mario 64. <laughs> See, I might have chucked the penguin off the mountain, but I wouldn't have thought to do it after giving it back to its mum. I think that's the bit where I'd have been like, it's locked in now. Can't change my mind now. Surely not. But 
Apparently you can if you're a monster. Looking at you, cut. I don't chuck I mean what's below the mountain? Is there like a is there like a pool or something that it's gonna drop into and it can go have a nice swim? Nah, it's a kill zone. Designed it's just kind of out. floating in infinite void space. Um, it's going to die from starvation, or it's going to hit something at some it point, or it's going it to respawn. respawn. It might go so far into like the three D world space that it'll just appear at zero zero zero. Yeah. Or floating like point numbers get it. it starts glitching out. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh. I don't what kind of existence? What kind of end is that for the baby penguin? I don't think I could chuck it off. It's a baby penguin. Penguins are innocent. Unlike like the Bioshock children or like anybody in Fallout, penguins are innocent. Mm. They are in suits, though. <laughs> they would chuck someone in a suit. It's a good point. Yeah. Does that make it okay? If something's in a suit, you can just kill it. Are those are the rules. No well, one told me. It's not okay, but, you know, on the meter. <laughs> uh, on the morality meter. <laughs> Killing somebody, <laughs> killing someone in a suit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Don't kill people in a suit. Yeah, uh, no, I, I think I'd still not chuck him off because he's a nice penguin. You got a star. He is him. nice, and I, I actually love penguins as they they genuinely are my favourite animal. But I just can't deny how comedic it would be. Thing is, I can watch you two do it, and then I yeah. don't have to do it myself. Yeah. You get you get all the all the the, the comedy factor. But none of the repercussions. Oh no! <laughs> We're just going straight to straight red. Straight to red. <laughs> oh no! Is that a bad one? Is that? Oh no! <laughs> that got, oh no! I think that's uh, that's probably an accurate reflection of uh, how renegade we've just gone. I think both of you, Oliver and Ben, nudged it quite far over, and then Kat saying, "Well, I can just watch you do it." That just makes you yeah. complicit. It, <laughs> that doesn't make it okay. I like I like teaming up in my renegade options, honestly, Ben. Like it's um, it yeah, makes it less it works. A little Ooh. less benevolent somehow. <laughs> oh god, it's swirling. Oh, morality ometer. Swirl, oh, no. swirl, swirl. Well. Tell us the lesson that we must <laughs> we learn. learn. Go on, swirl, you. Learn our lines, probably. Yeah. Yeah, you probably shouldn't start the word. <laughs> but, hey, but, um. All right, decision three. You've got your dream job with Electronivision. We're in everything. Um, <gasps> you've been working on your your most epic project. Uh, your This is your dream game. You've been working on it for years. You've managed to amass a really killer team behind it. The press has picked up on it. Streamers have picked up on it. Everyone's really excited for this game that you developed. Your magnum opus. It's going to sell like millions. The world is going to go crazy. And you open up the latest build. And oh, no. What's this? Oh, no. Oh, no. There's loot crates. Loot crates everywhere. They've played with your game and filled it with loot crates. Now. Do you continue development? Or, knowing that you will not get caught and nobody will know it was you, do you delete it? Do you stop this bastardized version of your dream game that has been destroyed by meddling folks? Do you get rid of it? I feel like you're about to say meddling marketing teams because I would be the one that has the new I'm so sorry, but I'd be the one that had added in the loot boxes. I've worked on too many mobile games to say I'd delete it. <laughs> it would be really hypocritical of me. We don't need to anyway, because they'll all be illegal soon. See, it's coming. People that don't know what they're doing are making decisions again. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oliver, you're... you're, you're... You're near the I, start I, of your game development adventure. It's true. It's true. Um, so, like, if I was on an extraordinarily successful RPG project and, like, it was based on, like, a really big pen and paper RPG and then I walked into work one day and I saw that that had happened and, like, seeing it so close, so Icarus, so close to the sun, I'd be, like, I'd, like, dramatically bash down on that delete key because <laughs> you can't get that close to the sun and then and then Let's do that i would i would i would burn it to the ground 
Ah, that's a yes. That's a delete for the greater good. For, for the greater, for the greater good. good. <laughs> <laughs> There's a huge thing here, being like we 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 have no shame. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, I mean, I have I, lots of shame, but <laughs> still, <laughs> <laughs> it's, more, it's, more, it's, it's easy to like in. It's easy to like theorize in in a hypothetical, you know. So, <laughs> I'll 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 enjoy myself in the hypothetical before I have to actually make a, a decision like that someday. If this is your game, you can always add in like extra. Like you, you could make it so that like the loot boxes are more ethical loot boxes. Like you're not just chucking them in and being yeah. like, you want to get level two loot box, and you might get level between one and level a hundred. You have to have a level two to make move next. But you could put in like ones that are like, hey, you can just skip some XP, and you can have a loot yeah. box that just got skins, and like you can do it like and be like, you oh, can do it. You, you absolutely can do it correctly. I, I imagine the example we're seeing in this uh, is is one that happens. Yeah. It's just like <laughs> this, is, this is what I'm doing. It's the it's the horrible goose. Uh, we're releasing it, and you have to get your card reader subscription. Um, oh my god! Thank God which I destroyed is, it. Of course, mandatory for online play. <laughs> you are a horrible goose. I can confirm You're it. Yeah, goose. I've lost my beak though. Um, right, morality-ometer. Um, um, uh, Oliver is the bastion of virtue here. What? <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, the first time for everything. It's but, true. Yeah, but we're still selling our souls for for money. But it's it was your magnum opus. Maybe uh, we're still still a bit. We're just gonna get hate mail now. We're just yeah. like, oh, yeah. Yeah. like <laughs> you put loot boxes in games, and we hate you. Tell us in the comments how much you hate them. Oh my god! <laughs> Thanks for that. Here's some, here's some <laughs> petrol. He's got this petrol here. Let me just pour it on the fire. <laughs> wow. Is this your is this your horrible goose task? It's just like get the game devs killed. <laughs> <laughs> Don't kill them, please. <laughs> we want more. We want more content from them before oh, yeah, that yeah. happens. Um. Morality ometer swirl, swirl, swirl. <laughs> Tell us a lesson that we must learn. Um, yeah, you can only make a curling joke so many times <laughs> before um, see the audience's interest flicking off. <laughs> Unfortunately, we can't see you at home, beautiful audience. Um, so do tell us uh, in the comments what uh, your favourite moral dilemmas are. And would you kill a little girl to have a coffee hands that's what we want to know uh <laughs> all right where are we um question four what time are we on great let's keep going um enjoy having this stuck in your head for <laughs> however long it will be um very simple one played the witch three um yeah no tris tris i've no mm. idea who these people are but you... tris looks better so i'm gonna go with tris <laughs> yen looks like Super edgy. She's she's his daughter. I I have I no, played like no, four hours of the week. No, right? no. Three. <laughs> I'm guessing it's very much not his daughter. <laughs> ah. Yen is. Oh, I is don't she the sorceress? Is she the sorceress at the start? She's the sorceress, and she, for some reason, ends up that her and Geralt have like a love potion or something that means that they are really they they love each other. But then, regardless, like Triss is just better like she's just more ethical and she's cooler and like she doesn't just go like she's she's just she's just better and I also I you played the witcher because it's fantastic I, I play i played like three hours of it and i'm very much when it comes to video games i'm like i play until the point where i'm like i feel like i've seen the majority of the systems at play and then i go oh that was nice next one um because i'm a <laughs> i'm obsessed with playing as many games as possible anyway anyway i've only met yen who is not Geralt's daughter, otherwise it would be pretty bizarre. Uh, so I'm going to go with Yen. <laughs> and this is what we call um, flame bait for the comments. That's the only reason it's here. So tell us in the comments, folks, who would you choose? Can I, um, can I change my answer to yeah. Geralt's butt? Well, oh, was that an option? Well, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, you may choose Geralt's butt. Um, yeah, why limit what, yourself? Real um, real why not give yourself a buy five and have all of them? Yeah. 
let's look. Let me tell ourselves, folks, we're, we're not even going to consult the morality ometer, but we are going to ask it to swirl, swirl, swirl and tell us the lesson that we must learn. Oh, that's a fun Sega fact about Flicky. Um, interestingly, it was originally titled Busty. Um, why? We don't know. But hey, Flicky it is. All right. You've decided to take a break. You decided to go and work on Firewatch for the summer. Get out of the city. Spend some time in the woods. Protect people from horrible fires. You know, horrible fires. I suppose those nice fires that only <laughs> make you a little bit crispy. <laughs> yeah. um, you're walking in the woods. There's no one around and your phone is dead. Out of the corner of your eye, you spot him. Shia LaBeouf. He's following you about 30 feet back. He gets down on all fours and breaks into a sprint. He's gaining on you. Shia LaBeouf. He's looking for your car, but you're all turned around. He's almost upon you now, and you can see there's blood on his face. My God, there's blood everywhere. What do you do? There's a bloody Shia LaBeouf almost upon you in the woods. I'm not doing anything. I love Shia LaBeouf. He's like a champion of postmodernism. You think maybe this is a, a performance art piece by Shia LaBeouf? Yeah, exactly. He's just got a point to prove, man. Like he's just he's just doing his thing. Just let him be. Yeah. Just leave Shia is this be. In Firewatch, Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> yeah. I feel like we've gone back to loot boxes again. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I, you just have to follow what Shia says and just do it. And in this case, doing it is literally just running as far away as possible because I feel like anybody bloody and running on all fours towards you is not a good thing. And up a tree is better than on the ground with Shia LaBeouf. Um, I feel like that's going to be taken out of context at some point. But yeah, I, I'm going to go and hide up a tree. Because I don't think anybody bloody and, like, crawling towards you is a good idea. What if Shia LaBeouf's had a really nasty injury and he's just looking for some help? Oh, my God. And then I can, like, like I can, like, fix his wound and I can ask him questions about his, like, the meaning of his, his art over the last five to ten years. Please. Shia LaBeouf would probably love that. Or... He might bleed out, though, in the time he's talking <laughs> Yeah, but I'll get my answers. <laughs> <laughs> but what, of course, the, the flip side of that, what if he is an actual cannibal, Shia LaBeouf? He wouldn't actually be a cannibal. It'd be too, it'd be too real. <laughs> what if, like, they've accident? What if, like, Shia LaBeouf's in a part of something? They've accidentally shared the cannibalism perk, and uh, he he just comes up to you and presses E to chat to you. And accidentally just starts eating your corpse. Because oh, yeah. that's a feature. Thank you for that 76 for that. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like in keeping with, with Firewatch, I'd probably just walk slowly away and then get sad on the radio, probably, and ignore that he's there because there's no other characters. Ah, but what yeah. if Shia LaBeouf is then upon you and is killing you? Fine. I'm drunk. <laughs> She's just good. <laughs> yeah. Let it be. Yeah. You've had a good time. Yeah. Yeah. I've had a, I was playing, had a nice um, summer. Uh, being I was sad. playing Divinity, and it's like literally, you like choose literal uh, perks or like um, whatever their like uh, their name for it is, and one of them is literally like corpse eater, and I'm like, in what world is that like considered a perk? It's mad, but yes. Mm. Not to I mean, you're never going to get hungry if you're a corpse eater in a world of dead bodies. Mm. In a world of Shia LaBeouf's, there can only be one corpse eater. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, did I just get my corpse eaten? <laughs> corpse eater. Metal, no, we're not going down that route. Um, I feel like you've all been very kind and generous to bloody Shia LaBeouf. Because, of course, based on the song, he is an actual cannibal. And he would fuck you up if he could um it's a horrible goose of course just tie his shoelaces so when he tries to chase after you he 
fractures his neck and leg and then maybe peck his eyes a bit. Um, why not? So for the morality I feel like we've really nudged it quite far towards the uh, the Paragon there. Mm-hmm. Um, although is allowing Shire to continue his rampage of death and cannibalism okay? I'm... Um, mm. Not mm-hmm. sure. Hi, not Did you know what our sense of morality onto Shia LaBeouf? <laughs> Shia LaBeouf has his own sense of morality. Yeah, a morality Did onto himself. It does, that doesn't necessarily make it okay, though, does it? Well. <laughs> no, it doesn't, but it does shimmy the blame off us. Off us and onto LaBeouf. O- onto LaBeouf. Oh, good. Well, morality ometer swirl, swirl, swirl. Tell us the lesson that we must learn. Oh, uh, we've run out of lessons from the morality ometer, unfortunately, and someone's going to have to put 50 pence in the meter <laughs> uh, by visiting paypal.me slash cfguk slash three. It's actually three pounds in the meter to order more lessons from the morality ometer. Uh, bargain at twice the price. Season six, jump up, super starfish. Um, there are no pictures for this one, and it will soon become clear why. Please don't sue me. Um, it's your best friend's wedding day. Hooray! Um, Princess Petch from Texas, the ruler of the Fungal Kingdom, which is kind of weird. She's not a king. It's, it's the princess but in charge. Don't understand. Um, marrying um, Barry. Barry O'Toole, an uh, Irish electrician, generally known amongst friends as Barry O. Um, it's just stuck for some reason who knows why uh and the best man trouser uh barry barrio's friend he's some sort of lizard leather daddy thing um and imagine you're pacing the pews of a church corridor and you can't help but to hear you can't help but to hear an exchanging of of bodily fluids of some sort as you open the door and peer in there's Barry, Barrio and Trouser going at it. Um, there's definitely some sort of cloacal action going on and the squelching and there's all sorts. It's, it's a good job Barry's still got his dungarees on and not his wedding outfit, otherwise it would be ruined. Um, do you tell your best friend Princess Petch? I'm stunned. <laughs> well, as you would be if you encountered this kind of interspecies cloacal action going down on, on the wedding day. I um, thought you were going to launch into some panic at the disco uh, singing during the <laughs> I mean, maybe they're in a polyamorous relationship and this is all consensual. Maybe it's a triad. We shouldn't judge. However, you should probably, like, check in with Princess um, Petch. 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 To, <laughs> Petch. Uh, and just be like, hey, is, is everything okay? Maybe this is a matter of convenience. And it's just, they're doing it for the, uh, for the visa, for the, may, it's not my place to judge, but it's useful to, like, just have a chat as adults. I'm assuming that she's, but yeah, yeah. weird enough without her not being of legal age. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how she's meant to be in um, Barrio. In, uh, yeah, so she's <laughs> sixty-four um, now. <laughs> yeah, like just just check in with her, make sure that she's okay, and like be a shoulder there to lean on. But also, don't don't judge, don't assume that everything's wrong. It could just be that this is. This, this is all consensual and it's triad or little polyamorous circle. What if going to her with this information could bring down and destabilise the whole monarchy of the fungal kingdom uh, and they enter a period of civil war? I hadn't considered that. I'm totally here for the drama, though, so I'm going to tell her. Because <laughs> <laughs> it might all be fine, you're right. But I love that, like, you should check in Civil War, it. like, the drama. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if everybody, like, it's, it's better to tell her, and then 
everybody to have like a nice adult conversation about it than her to walk in on them one evening scales all over the floor <laughs> copper wires everywhere gold coins are plenty yeah. and yeah it's better, it's better to let her know than have a jump in on something they, they actually use platinum pieces in the uh, in the fungal kingdom Sorry, rather than old coins. Pieces, old <laughs> coins. <laughs> I mean, from my perspective, this could be like a stag do thing, gone out of hand, you know, just a couple of boys, one last hurrah, you know, and then it then it's all all in for the marriage, you know, he's gonna be a perfectly great husband, the kingdom will survive. There's no way, there's no way I'm dropping the boys in it. It's just I just couldn't. I just couldn't to the boys. Good. Well, that's that's that problem solved. Done. Gavel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lordy loaf. Oh, How are we lovely. ranking morality-wise on that? Well, um, it's, oh, yeah. Let's find out where where we are. Where are we? Um, Morality. I think everyone did pretty good there. I feel like um, there was a lot of a lot of consideration to the possibilities and the options that were going on. It wasn't just Barry um, getting his end away or fingers. Um, it was it, there were lots of possibilities, and we're willing to explore those rather than jumping to conclusions and running straight to patch and potentially. Um, causing a terrible civil war. Um, was Oliver's just like, let boys be boys. <laughs> get, get, let them get down. I think, uh, Not yeah. all the time, but in this instance. What's, what's yeah. the morality meter's decision on the uh, very, very close and careful uh, copyright infringement on this? Uh, oh, yeah, no, the morality <laughs> is a little bit concerned about... It would detonate. <laughs> about that. We, we were very careful. <laughs> <laughs> it, it likes that we were very careful. Um, all right, so we're we're feeling quite quite good and virtuous here. I think. Um, who knew that people in the gaming industry could have morals? Um, so morality on it to swirl, swirl, swirl. Tell us the lesson that we must learn. Um, yeah, swirl and learn don't really rhyme, do they? But you you, you can't just <laughs> steal everything from animaniacs and get away with it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, decision seven the oh, final one the trolley problem morality 101 I, and yes i, have I am obsessed with the trolley problem this oh. is going to be great all right so you find a trolley car and it's heading towards five people who are just i don't know having a lie down on the track um you can pull the lever and it will divert the trolley car because we all have trolley cars everywhere these days and it will kill just one person who's having a lie down on the tracks instead. Could have maybe Red Dead themed this one. Didn't bother. Um, so <laughs> it's going to kill five people. You have the power to change that. So it will kill one person. Should you, would you, could you exert that power? Do we know anything about the one person or the five people? Not yet, no. <laughs> it's quite important. Was that a, but... wait, hold the phone. Was that a not yet? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet, great. Oh, I see. All right. I'll, I'll step to the plate on this one. So, mm -hmm. uh, for me, when it comes to the trolley problem, um, it's all about, like, personal ownership over what's happening. And, like, I'm always, when it comes to it, willing to take the personal hit, pull the lever, take the responsibility for one murder, and then save four people. That's, that's just how I play the trolley problem. Sorry I couldn't meme it, but, like... I, I, no, the no, trolley problem is too near and dear for me to not give a genuine answer. I think that's a, a, a really good and, and appropriate answer. That's what I would, even as, as Robin, not as the goose. I think that opportunity to save lives is there. Why Why would you not take it and pull that lever? Yeah, I agree. Absolutely, but okay. I, think I'd, I think I'd pull the lever uh, uh, just because it... I could at least give a shot at trying to save the one person, like, I don't know, pull them off the thing. Even if I don't make it, which it implied in this situation is that I'm not going to make it. Mm. But I can mm. do my best. And I'm basically doing everything I could try to do to try and make it so that I I less I, I lessen everything. And like 
that that being said, that if you take this to be like the human donation, human body donation type situation, then that's a very different story because there's nothing that you can do. You're actively, this is, this is a, I'm going to do everything I can to try and save everybody. But when legitimately wise, like it's a lot easier to run to one person and go, right, I'm going to try and heave you off. Even if I don't heave them off, I'm probably not going to. I've tried. Whereas mm. I'm never going to be able to heave off five people. Like, It's a great so answer, Kat. But as you get closer, gaming. <laughs> you see that it's our Lord and Saviour Gabriel. <gasps> what have I done? <laughs> no. <laughs> and he's holding the only master copy of Half-Life 3 on its way to be pressed. Because <laughs> it's the olden days, apparently, where we have... Is it? Or you should, it's definitely not in source control somewhere. Uh, no, it's not in source control. He's very old-fashioned. Um, uh, yeah, he's got the only... Old it's going to be smashed. There's no way to save it. It's gone forever. By the time I get round to playing Half-Life 1 and 2 anyway, they have made it again. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I will very happily uh, go and say, right, we're going to switch it. We're going to try and save him, blah, blah, blah. Try and save Half-Life 3 before game. Um, but most importantly, as I'm doing this, uh, get my mate Twi Tim Sweeney on the phone and say, hey, Tim, I'm just helping you out here a little bit. Um, because I work in marketing. And I'm... <laughs> I'm so sorry, Gabe Newell. Please don't hate me. Please, nobody hate me. But, yeah, just get, get my mate Tim Sweeney on the phone. Just be like, yo, just about to help you share prices. Buy a few stocks in effort. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> now, at this yeah. point, if we were doing it in the real room, um, I would have said, well, the, as we get closer, we notice that the people on the track are the five people in the front row right there. Um, we can't do that. So mm. on the track are the rest of us. I think there's only Oliver who's maybe not not pulling the lever at the moment. Is the did the question really just transform into would you die for Half-Life no, no. Would you, would you kill us? No. Would, 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 would you, you Oliver? Oh, sorry, and Gabe. And Gabe, obviously. No, would you kill us three for Half-Life 3? Uh, fucking hell. Sorry, excuse my language. <laughs> Um, Flicking hell. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I am I still on the? Am I still on the hot seat here? Is that what's yeah, happening? Yeah. Let's. Uh... I mean, I've, I, I mean, I technically already made a decision, so I could just stick with. Oh my god, I've been zoomed in. Off. Yeah. I could technically <laughs> stick with the decision I made and and avoid angering the people I've made friends with. <laughs> Could. We get really nice in memorandum speeches mm -hmm. at like all we of did. the game, like like we we'd get they'd, they'd do a BAFTA thing and say, and here's your in memorandum BAFTAs. <laughs> oh no, we, yeah, we might be. On oh, the... this is the this is the hardest one for sure. This is like deeply confusing, and uh, some would describe it as a quandary. Oh. <laughs> Someone else go. Someone take it off me for a minute. I think everyone else is pulling the lever, Oliver. Yeah. <laughs> what, to kill Gabe? Yeah. Well, not to um, kill him, but... <laughs> I, <laughs> to not kill everyone else. I, yeah. Well, I might get my... to go on another VGX panel if I keep you alive, Robin, so that's something <laughs> in for me. <laughs> I, I'll just buy you some, some uh, uh, epic, epic game store stocks and then pull the lever. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. I'll stick with I'm my answer. Be... I'll stick with my answer. I think you're gonna you're gonna push the lever, or you're gonna leave it with a heavy with a heavy heart. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Sorry about saving all your lives. I feel real bad about it. <laughs> wow. It's for the jokes. Don't worry. Oh no, the goose! Uh... It's, it's gonna drop some cutlery in there. And have some multi-track drifting. Hooray! Everyone's fed. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Bing. Kill them all. Um, th that's the final decision in our little game of moral quandaries and dilemmas 
and I feel like from a from a from quite a renegade beginning, the panel has warmed up to humanity, has invested in their own moral fibre, and largely proven that game developers can be renegade, but ultimately they're good people and deserve your money and adulation and probably um, wish listing their games or purchasing them on Steam so that they can continue to eat. I don't have to put loot boxes in them. Buy cat ears um, and things. So we've already cast the judgment. So there we go. Judgment has been cast. Um, should have probably checked these slides. So you, you kind of, you're a mix. You're a mix of Renegade and Paragon. But ultimately, you're good people. Probably because I picked you and I only know good people. Um, oh. so what what have we learned today? What lessons? What are you going to take away from today? What moral learnings have you had? I think Be- bees are important. Bees even are important. Coffee was a thing. You need bees for coffee. So I feel like bees. <laughs> You've got that gift weirdly to hand. <laughs> <laughs> Always. <laughs> I have a special Oprah button. So like. What I would say is maybe like Devil Horns looked really sick in the original Fable game, but maybe they're not actually that practical in real life. Hmm. Something for us all to ponder there, Oliver. Thank you. I think I think my my biggest learning is um, check slides beforehand and. <laughs> Also, that that. sorry, that's very salty of me. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> and also, yeah, um, I'm, I'm going to get hate mail for <laughs> this for a long, long time. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be well, fine. Uh, please have all your complaints to uh, Ben. Uh, he is uh, the person to address complaints to. Yeah. <laughs> fine. Oh, we've learned all kinds of things. Um, let's make it all, uh, there you go. You can all point in the right direction. Um, this has been delightful. Um, thank you very much. And um, fine folks at home, if you'd like to tell us your favourite moral dilemmas or what you would do in those uh, scenarios, if you'd go for some hot cloacal action, then uh, get in touch and let us know. I'm just checking my slides because uh, all that's left to do really is to thank my wonderful panellists, uh, Oliver William Walker. Who are you and what do you do and where can people follow you? Uh, hi, uh, I'm a video game designer. Oh my god, what? And uh, my studio, uh, Radical Forge, just released Bright Poor literally yesterday. Um, so give Bright Poor a look. Oh my, you have to you have to like block it out, otherwise you can't yeah. see the logo. Um, but Bright Poor was a game that I worked on very early in my game dev career, and to see it released uh, with such a fantastic team has been amazing. So please give Bright Poor a look, and I couldn't be more proud of the team at Rad Forge. Um, so yes, thank you so much. Awesome. Kat, who are you and where can people follow you and what do you do? <sighs> I'm Kat. I'm a marketing manager at Bossa Studios. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Pope Lady and you can buy Surgeon Simulator, which came out on the Epic Game Store and you can purchase it on the Epic Game Store. And please, because Tim Sweeney will have my house and my home and my children and <laughs> all the other things. I mean, I think that's more just to do with, uh, like, a massive addiction to video games. But, um, yes, please buy the game. It's great. Um, and I also am the gamers if you're gay and you're, or you like other people who are gay and you, you're an ally. Come and join us. We've got great things. And we've got a women's section and a non-binary section. It's great. Come and do it. It's great. Hooray. Um, oh, too many banners. Ben, who are you? What do you do? Where can people follow you? I'm Ben. I'm a game designer at Mediatonic. You can follow me on Twitter at Ben Nizan. It's too many things to click. There it is. Yeah. Um, if you haven't already bought Four Guys, you should buy Four Guys. And if you have already bought Four Guys, you should buy Murder by Numbers, which I didn't work on, but was made by brilliant people at our company. It's so I, good. I, I, I can say that to make numbers. it. It's really good. Yeah. <laughs> it's genuinely my favourite game. Yeah. <laughs> 
And I'm Robin Bates, and I came up with this just so that I could get a panel at an event. Uh, I run a company called Coaching for Geeks, which is uh, life, love, health, fitness, geek culture, gaming, uh, everything for the modern geek nerd or introvert. Um, come along, get involved, and that's it. That's the end of the panel. Um, so let me just fiddle around with this. Thank you, panellists. You were dead good. Yeah. And thank you, EGX Digital, uh, for putting this on, for having us along. And I don't know if I've got any more slides. Um, yeah, end. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thanks for coming. <laughs> oh, my thank God. You, <laughs>